Hey y'all, Irix Sky here. Welcome back to my YouTube studio. Now, what I want to talk about within this video is cloud storage, storage on the internet. And well, why I don't use much cloud storage at all. So essentially what's happened is that a lot of uh, cloud storage providers, and you, you can figure out which companies they are, but they get you on their cloud storage and they say, oh, it's convenient because you can, you can access your files from anywhere, any device, because it's on the cloud, it's on the internet. And in theory, that's great. However, there's a few things that you may not have thought about. Number one, if your uh, if your internet connection it has a data cap, and even if you've got quote unquote unlimited internet, if you read the fine print, you might find that your internet does not provide unlimited data, which basically means once you go over, depending upon which internet service provider you have, that it'll probably become very expensive. So that's that's one reason to not heavily embrace cloud storage because you're going to potentially be exceeding your home internet data cap. The other thing is, if you embrace cloud storage, you get everything out there, potentially months or years of data, and and then the provider goes up. They say, oh, and they come up with some excuse. They're like, because of uh, whatever, you know, monthly cloud storage rates are going to increase by X amount. <clears throat> so it's like, well, do you want to go to the trouble for a few bucks a month and download all your data and put it somewhere else? A lot of people probably won't. They'll probably just pay the extra. The problem is, is that that's just one increase. Typically increases are every year. So you'll probably, you'll probably find, well, wow, you know, and now I'm paying X dollars per month. What if I just purchased my own storage and created my own private cloud at home? That's what I did. So you can see right here, here's my Synology. And you can find a link to it linked within this video's description. But what this does, this Synology device, I can put in my own disk. Right now I've got one, but it'll support up to two. And there's larger Synologies that'll support a lot more. So what I do, I've got a 16 or 18 terabyte hard drive in there. I've got all my data. And then I've got a USB disk just a cheap 18 terabyte hard drive that I had and put in a USB enclosure and I copied everything to it. So I've got backup. So if the disc within this Synology field, I've got a backup disc with all of the same data that I could pull out of a secure location and I wouldn't lose my data. Now you can put two drives in here and you can have, if one drive fails, you got a backup the problem with that, if your Synology was physically stolen, then you would lose all your data. It doesn't matter if the thief got a Synology with one drive or two drives. If it's physically out of your premises, you've lost that data. So for that reason, you know, I recommend backing up data at least in one, lo one off-site location. So as far as... Um, as far as Synology is concerned, and subscribe, ring that bell, check out my other videos too, but you could strictly share files among your various computers at your home location. You could also enable remote access by way of an iPhone app. Uh, you know, you could access it from your laptop remotely if you wanted to do so. So there's a lot of flexibility that Synology brings to the table. And at least at this point in time, and hopefully this doesn't change, at this point in time, I'm not aware of any subscription fees for using Synology, which is a positive. Yes, the initial investment is probably going to be a few hundred bucks, but what you would want to do is look at how much data do you have, how much are you spending per month for your cloud, you know, your internet data storage. I hate the word cloud, but that's kind of the, the trendy thing to refer to data that's stored off-site on the internet. Um, but look at how much you're spending per month now, and then look at, again, I linked it within this video's description, look at the Synology, and keep in mind, I've got an 18 terabyte in mind, 
you may could get the Synology and get by with something smaller like a four terabyte. I mean, you may not have all the data that I do. So if you look at the price of the Synology plus the drive or, you know, two drives, if you're putting two drives in it, <clears throat> and like I said, I would recommend a second drive, just a standard uh, hard drive and a USB enclosure so you could create a copy of all, your, all of your valuable information, store it at a different location, but keep your Synology NAS as your primary uh, file storage so that you can access it from home or remote, you know, wherever you are. But look at the price of the Synology plus the drive and have that number in front of you. Again, I linked it all within this video's description, expand this video's description and click the link there to find, uh, to find current pricing. But then determine, okay, well, you know, that's X hundred dollars. Given the cloud subscription plan that you have, how many months would it take to meet or exceed that dollar amount? That's your break even point. So, you know, once you hit, you know, let's say hypothetically, you're, you're spending $300 a year for cloud storage. Well, you may find, and, and I don't quote prices because prices change, but when you add up the price of the Synology plus the driver drives, you may find that, hey, as, as soon as a year, you could break even. So, you know, I'm in this from a, um, yeah, I consider myself to be a pretty technical dude, but I'm sharing this from a dollar's perspective. And just having something that looks nice, like the Synology, something that's quiet, it's got rubberized feet, is just so much better, in my opinion, than having to deal with a subscription for cloud storage. And there's subscriptions for everything now. Even silly stuff like a garage door opener in a car. I've got an Acura. They're trying to sell me a subscription to a garage door opener because they don't they don't include a, a garage door opener in the, in the vehicle. And I think that's dumb because I've got my own solution and I just use a, it's a garage door opener called MyQ and I've got the app on my phone, my Apple Watch, and I use that. I just don't push a button or a virtual button in my Acura. I just think that's stupid. That's money wasted. These subscription things are stupid. They're a waste of money. And even if it's just a few bucks increase here and there, it's a waste of money. And over time, people are like, man, you know, they start looking at all these subscription costs and it's like, that's a waste of money. So certain things, even though it may not be the most trendy move, you may be like, you may, you may have some friends that are like, man, that's, that's old school, dude. Why are you putting a NAS, network attached storage in your place? Well, you know, you're the one that's got, after the break even point, you got the extra money to enjoy and they're still paying a subscription for whatever cloud storage. So, you know, and, and you can build, if you're, and, and I could have, I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat, well, I'd say very technologically savvy. I could have built my own Linux based network attached storage, but I bought the Synology because it's got its own little OS built in. It's got a good appearance as you can see there. And it's a small footprint. Yes, I could have built a small uh, micro form factor uh, x86 computer and installed, you know, installed Linux on it and created my own NAS, but I didn't want to do that. I mean, it's, these things just work. And the web interface is super clean, super intuitive. Whether you've got an information technology background or not, <clears throat> you'll probably find that, in, that uh, the initial setup and the ongoing maintenance of the Synology NAS is, is pretty straightforward, even if you're not technologically inclined. So I just wanted to go on this rant because I am extremely irritated when it comes to subscriptions. I hate subscriptions. You know, I want to buy once and be done. Okay, well, how much is it going to cost? X number of dollars. Okay, let me buy it. Let me use it until it breaks. <laughs> so, you know, I, that's just my opinion. But... I encourage everyone, check your, you know, even if you're not familiar with what all you got, check your credit card statements if you're using credit card and look at how much you're spending per month for cloud storage. It'll probably blow your mind. And then again, expand this video's description, click the link there, look at the cost of the Synology plus the drive or drives, you know, whatever size you may want. I mean, that's your choice depending upon how much data you have. But I think you'll find that if you went this route, 
you could potentially save a ton of money and eliminate those costly, just pesky uh, cloud storage subscriptions. Thanks for your viewership. Be sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and check out all my other videos too. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.